Okay, so this is the first uh, video of the Roblox Scripts and Tutorials. So, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, if you, if you don't have Roblox Studio already, go to Google Chrome. <laughs> then go to Roblox.com. Then after it loads, <coughs> this is really slow right now. I'll be back. Okay, so after it loads, you want to go to the develop tab up here. And then under the my, you want to go to the My Creations tab. Once that pops up, go down here to I think it says Roblox Studio. Click on Download. I won't click that because I've already have it. So now, after you get it, open up the tab, and then you should get something like this. You want to you're probably gonna want to log in, and then just go to Base Plate because that's all we're gonna need today. So you should get this little thing, nothing fancy. And so you're going to want to have these tabs. I'm using right now. I'll show you how to get in a minute. So what you want to do is you want to open this thing right, open this tab up here, press this little arrow up here. All right, this will get like the kind of like a home thing, I guess. Yeah, home. So then you want to do is you want to go over to View and get Explorer in Properties. I like to set my properties and explore up like this. You can customize them to whatever you want. So you can drag them around, give them different ways. I, my, I like my like this. You can put it any way you want. I'm also going to want to take out the output window. Right here. Oops. I put mine like this. And then go to model. Click on advanced objects. Then go to home. Click on toolbox. So I'm going to describe some things here. So... <clears throat> the output window is mainly only going to be, mainly only gonna be used to if you're scripting, which is what we're going to be doing in these tutorials. So the output window will tell you, will show you any errors, like in red. This has to do with um, a plugin, which doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing right now. So the error, if there's an error, it'll show you in red. It'll show you what line of the script it is, and it'll give you details about what the problem is. It'll also show you like little warnings will be shown in yellow. Um, it'll also show you things like um, the stats of the server, kind of like this thing right here. Like maybe if a player joins, it'll show something in blue. Also, it'll show you things that you print that in black. Like if you type in print hello, see, it'll show it in yellow right there. I mean black. So let's explain the Explorer tab. All these, um, all of these folders in here are in the game. And so the workspace, this is where everything you see in the game except for the sky and your GUIs <coughs> are put. So like this big, this big brick right here is in the workspace in our base plate. So if I do that, I can move around and stuff. <coughs> so... Uh, all the parts and stuff, everything you see here is in the workspace. This is kind of where Roblox renders everything so you can see it. The players is a place where it hosts like your player data, like how your player looks, you know, your character appearance, all that kind of stuff. It holds your, um, <coughs> it holds your backpack and all your tools, and your screen GUI, stuff like that. The lighting has to do with, you know, how bright it is. You can adjust the brightness and the shadows, like that, and the color of the shadow and outline and stuff, and fog. Most of that yet. Um, we're gonna skip these since I don't really know what it's for. I never need to use it. Server script service. You know, you can just put scripts in there if you don't want to put it in like you know the workspace stuff like that. Server storage. Um, it's a place to store models stuff you're not gonna use currently. You used to use lighting for that. You can you can still use it with lighting, 
but you can, whatever works for you. Starter GUI is like the things like only your player can see. You know, like um, maybe like you know where there's buttons on the screen, like maybe a shop or something like that. Most games have them. Um, the starter pack. Okay. Also, starter GUI. You, you put all the GUIs that you want every player to have in here. So when they spawn a character, they'll have it. The starter pack is still to starter GUI, except it, it has your tools in it. It, you put it. You put the tools in here. You want every single player to have it joining the game. The starter player are like, like things that you want characteristics that you want your player player to have. Like you know their health display distance, how far away you can see their health and their name, from display distance, their maximum camera zoom distance and their minimum auto jump and all that kind of stuff. The soundscape has to do with sounds, like how far away. You hear a sound and how close, and how kind of like it sounds like. HTTP service is kind of like a new, well, not really new because it came out about a year ago. But what it does is that it can send HTTP requests to a server, to like a web server, and it'll send data back to you if you ask for it. So that's the Explorer tab. Um, so the tab is a properties tab. A property is like. You can start as characteristics, like um, like for example, this the color of this brick right here would be a property of the brick. So I can change it. That'll be property. Just keep it at black right here. Right. <clears throat> so that's a characteristic of it, like transparent, so like making it invisible and stuff. So that's one thing, like the name, anchor, and all that. So that's kind of characters things characters are different for just about everything so I'm not going to go through them all let's go over here to the advanced objects thing so in the advanced objects we know um all these things in here are called instances um every single game has them it's impossible to game without them it just won't work all these things in here are an instance you can insert them into the game just by double clicking on them edit you know these things most of these things that we will be we will be using like with scripting. Otherwise, can't make anything really fancy happen. So you can also search in the instance that you want, like maybe a script. That's how we get programmer game and stuff like that, which we're not going to do today. So now we're going to move on to this home thingy up here, All right, this little area up here. So this ha has like some basic tools for your game. For Again. So, like, you can create a tool, and you can create, like, a part, and then, like, you have these four basic tools up here that Roblox has for you. There's a select tool that doubles as a dragger, so you can click it to select it, and then hold down the left mouse button to drag it around. And then, um, this will, kind of, you know, just drag around to where you want. This is ki this is similar to the dragger, except you can move it on a specific axis. Like the green one is a Y axis, the blue one is the uh, Z axis, and the red one is the X axis. This would be helpful, like if you have like two parts, a certain distance from each other, and you want to have a part in like in between them, but you can't hard to do it with, with a dragger. So you can move it in the axis like that. Makes things a lot easier in some cases. <coughs> And the scale, it'll scale the part, you know, you can resize it and stuff to how you need it to be. Okay, you'll need that. And also the rotate, self-explanatory pretty much. Just grab the handle, same axes, you know, red for X, um, green for Y, and then blue for Z. There's also the the lock thing. Um, if you lock a tool, if you lock a brick, you won't be able to select it with any of these draggers or any of these tools up here. So that can help sometimes if you just try to select a certain group of parts. Um, the collisions thing, like right now, when I like resize my my bricks or move them around, they can go inside each other inside each other because the collisions are turned off. But if you turn on collisions, it will it'll stop. You won't be able to put them inside each other. While well, that is turned on, but if you go too far, it'll go like on the other side. So that'd be good.
Good for some circumstances, you forget yourself. I could have it off as best as for maximum customization, I say. So this is the little thing that says join. This is like automatic welding, pretty much. Like, if you want to weld these two pieces together, I just put them how I want them. They have to be touching each other. I could put them up, like, in the air like that. And then when I go to play, they will fall as one piece. So you can bring it up again. It falls one piece, it won't fall apart. That's one you can do. <coughs> also, the toolbox over here. You can use it to get free models, like guns and cars. If you type in cars in the search bar, you can just click on it and drag it in there and do whatever the heck you want with it. You can use it with pictures like decals. So you can do decals like the Roblox scene and all that. Just drag it onto the part you want. We're not going to deal with that, though. So, um, this little button right here says part. This is like a short, it's a better way of. It's an easier way of inserting a part rather than typing it here in the advanced objects. So, <clears throat> we click on here, create a normal part. And so you can manipulate it and stuff in here. There, also, this arrow, click on it, you can get a bunch of different kinds of parts. Like a sphere, you know, which is a ball. You can resize it, do the same things you can do with a regular part. And you can also do a wedge, which is like a ramp. And there's also a cylinder, which is, you know, a cylinder. I don't use this one very often. There are better ways of making cylinders or customizable. I'll teach you that later. Um, there's also material. You can like choose the material you want and then click on the part you want it to be applied to. Same thing with color. So this, so this, these things up here like anchored. It's like applying, applying, like adding an anchor will turn off gravity for the for the part like if I press play like I can see it's not falling at all but if I turn off grab if I unanchor it it'll fall gravity will be applied to it so if, you, if you're making a building you're most likely going to make it anchored so people can't mess around with it so um group it is a helpful feature like if you want to have all these like one thing so they'll move like in perspective with each other, you can drag it around. They'll stay the same distance from each other and stuff. That can be helpful for a lot of things. You can also do ungroup to ungroup them. This right here is terrain. We we're not gonna mess with that today. Okay. The, um. So this play button here. This play button right here will start all the scripts and the game, um, it'll start all the scripts in the game, and it'll apply physics to everything. So, like, um, right now nothing is moving, you know, I have anchored or unanchored. So when I press play, it'll, uh, it'll start the whole game, it'll, it'll start the physics engine, it'll start the scripts, and all that. And also, if you want to test it with your character, like if you're testing something that involves, like, you know, players or tools and stuff, what you can do is you can click on that little arrow, click on the type you want. The play with the character will be that little blue triangle with the little blocky character on it. This will start the whole game, but it'll add in your character that you're logged in with. If you're not logged in, it'll do a default guest. So you can interact with everything with the character and all that. Helps a lot. And also, the stop button, if you click on that, it'll stop the whole thing and reset to how it was before you click on the play button. So now let's get to these little things over here. So the paste button, you know, pretty obvious you can paste stuff into it, into the game. Um, the copy, depending on where you gain copy, um, and then paste. A shortcut for doing copy and paste is Control C to copy and Control V to paste. You also do cut um, and duplicate, which is pretty much the same as copying, except if you do um, Control C and Control V, it'll stack it on top of each other, but if you do duplicate, It'll spawn, everything will be exactly the same. See, like, it's two parts up here, but it's, it's two parts in here, too. Got that. And also, this redo button, that can be your best friend sometimes. Like, like let's say you se actually selected everything, and then you, like, deleted it, and you're like, oh, no, what am I going to do? You can just click on the redo button, and then it'll do it back to what you just did. And you can redo button, like, a bunch of times. 
Oh okay. You press that button to go to the most recent one. And then press the back one to go to go backwards. So that is the you know overview studio.